Hello, we are in Ancedonia, Tuscany, Italy, and what looks like cliffs in the distance are actually top to bottom hewn walls, reaching the height of some 30 meters. All the surfaces on these walls, which are not eroded, are clearly covered with uh, tool marks. Now this is an aerial view of the location and the purpose for building this canal, which looks rather insignificant from the air, is to connect or somehow regulate or do something to a 3 kilometers artificial lake, or at least artificially shaped for sure, maybe there was something natural before that, and make it a part of this extensive network of uh, all kinds of uh, terraformations in Italy and beyond. These are ancient or certainly historic terraformations, the scale of which is uh, really enough to blow your mind. And yet they remain very much under the radar of uh, the attention because although they are officially recognized as um, historic creations, they are so skillfully masked with uh, modern infrastructure on the top that basically nobody goes as far as putting the full puzzle together and uh, wondering, hey, hey, this is a little bit too much. The labor invested in uh, making this entire network is unreasonable in relation to what we imagine the ancient men to have been. Although certain more remarkable spots of this network could be even preserved as historic sites and marked as such, and the tourists may admire it, still the big picture escapes, because people fail to notice that they are looking only a fraction of 1% of the full thing. For example, the large uh, lake and the impressive channels, which by the way continue in the sea as well, underwater, they are only one of the corners of the Orbitello Peninsula, the artistic uh, shape of which has been raising suspicions for quite some time now about its artificial origin. And it is not just the two elegant uh, lines on the sides. The land in the peninsula itself has been cropped, definitely intelligently shaped with all kinds of uh, regular angles and channels underwater, regular and natural geometric shapes pretty much at every step around the Corner, corner all, all around in this peninsula, some sort of half submerged uh, infrastructure. I mean, looking at the inside of it, I would say it would be basically is far, far less than uh, their value. So, most of the ancient earthwork which you are gonna see in this video are listed as uh, ancient uh, slines for making salt, or simply ancient ports, or artificial lakes. This is first of the many hexagonal ports on which uh, you are gonna see throughout this video, or at least it, it is partially hexagonal. By the way, the two lakes uh, 
in the vicinity are also suspiciously regular in shape. I couldn't check each and every element of everything I'm gonna show in this video. Element of uh, the earthworks shaping mostly the coastal line and also sometimes inland. Just because uh, there is so much of it. So the biggest stretches of such earthwork, which are, let's say, 10 kilometers of constant, non-stop, intelligently manipulated land, they're called uh, ancient lines, and probably there is uh, some truth to it, but this uh, takes only one aspect of them, because as you can see here, there is also a lot of underwater canals in the area and inland canals, obviously part of the system as well. At many spots, the infrastructure, the earthworks are half submerged, yet another proof that it is historic and not modern. I mean, look at the magnitude of this. This, this stretches for kilometers. It is uh, always interconnected with a vast mesh of uh, inland canals. You can see that they are different from the rivers uh, because it follow geometric lines, unlike the natural rivers. So when you view these uh, aerial images, also take into consideration the work invested in all these thousands of uh, kilometers of often very wide canals. I'm sure some segments of them would be uh, modern as well because they are being reused um, and even now. However, most of them are even officially recognized as uh, historic creations. And also you will see them uh, clearly around the structures like star forts, which are clearly historic. Sometimes they mark the boundaries between the different uh, parts of Italy and Italy was uh, divided a long time ago. So there is, uh, there is proof that uh, most of the straight uh, artificial canals you're gonna see throughout this video are definitely historic and most likely ancient. And it seems these earthworks were pretty easy for their builders. Just notice how neatly they trimmed even the land where they are simply fields. Even with the design familiar to us from the star forts as seen in the previous videos. We don't do that in modern times, although we do have the equipment, it is uh, simply too expensive we do this type of uh, uh, coastal earthworks only at special places like ports. And as far as uh, what looks like uh, underwater canals inside the lakes and often also they would continue in the sea as well, they are also very typical for the old infrastructure. This by the way is Venice. The old infrastructure, as it is uh, seen, exactly as it is seen in uh, Florida and California. You can see it in this video, stretching for many, many kilometers, very regular, regular channels. And all I could find about these locations is that this is pristine nature. Nature reserves for birds, for example. These are also the ports in America. Again, the video is worth seeing. These are huge ports. They would be very expensive to make nowadays. And the extent, uh, the depth to which uh, the infrastructure is submerged uh, both in America and Italy, it really gives the impression that it does belong to the very same uh, historic time. And interestingly enough, the style is absolutely identical. Great devotion is uh, shown to following these strict geometric lines. This, by the way, is uh, Cagliari, South Sardinia. This full area is uh, over 10 kilometers in radius and everything is uh, in uh, regular geometric shapes. Here, the old port, again, uh, with hexagonal elements and all the other regular geometric uh, works are supposed to be historic lines. I mean, how much salt did they use in Sardinia? What kind of population did it have to need 20 kilometers of salines? Were they on salt diet? 
so what I was getting at is that these uh, earthworks with uh, the numerous uh, uh, submerged canals and very precise geometric shapes everywhere, they seem to have a unique style of their own. And later on in the video, I'll compare them, uh, for example, with the Great Canal of China, which is also a, a historic earthwork of a similar nature, but it looks quite different. Also, I think uh, the modern uh, earthworks and ports of this type look somewhat like the Great Canal of China. Here again, shaping uh, simple farmland with uh, elegant elements. This is a lot of work. This stretches for kilometers. At least in China, they have uh, suitable tales to tell us. Uh, for example, I was listening earlier, for a given segment they had 5 millions of uh, Chinese people working, 2 millions died during the works. The amount of submerged canals is uh, enormous. Who would have uh, dug out that uh, all that manually in Sardinia? I've got no clue. This is Sardinia again. This is huge. Just compare it with the size of the fields around. Was it all connected with the huge ancient ships they had? Possibly. More about the ships later on in this video. Or maybe they had some sort of uh, super efficient machines with which they could uh, shape the land easily. Possibly if uh, they had uh, machines for uh, via covers, as seen here, then why not machines for underwater artworks as well? This is the port of uh, Genoa. Of course, the round part is uh, ancient. I knew it just by seeing it already, because it was uh, the old people who made everything uh, graceful and very symmetrical. I don't know if the modern port on the left side is also built on old infrastructure, because it is again quite symmetric, that, uh, that information I could not find. But what is uh, very revealing here is that the old port as such was perfect symmetry for all sides but when they turned it into some sort of entertainment center look now the streets not perfect round also the modern docks don't follow properly the beautiful shape of the flower while with the historic canals everything was perfect the buildings were always perfectly aligned with the graceful sacred geometry forms as well we do have some modern examples of uh, graceful designs with uh, similar earthworks uh, on the coast, but they are only exceptions. While with the older designs, elegant, graceful forms are just the rule. They are everywhere. And that's how I found uh, most of the stuff. Wherever there were particularly graceful and symmetric things on the map, I would uh, try to find their history. And in, uh, let's say, 80 or 90% of the cases, I could uh, find indications that uh, they're, if not definitely antique, then at least surely historic. Possibly some of the beaches, which also have very perfect shape, I'm talking about the big ones, those that are kilometers long and have a perfect uh, bow as a shape. I think some of them could be also artificially shaped, although that would be uh, quite difficult to prove because natural beaches are also perfectly round and uh, very uh, elegant. But I did notice indications as well that in areas where there is a lot of earthworks, some of the beaches uh, go beyond the natural shape. Sometimes the bow is uh, in the other direction or there is a, a row of them of identical size.
this area with these uh, salines as well stretches for tens of kilometers and the entire land is just artificially manipulated. I did spend some time, these salines are accepted uh, definitely as a historic site, one can uh, go and see them, also the canals they are historic because uh, I read that along them were aligned these and these uh, ancient historic buildings so that implied that the canal was made before the buildings so like this there is uh, scattered evidence here and there that uh, these entire areas for a couple of tens of kilometers everything canals and the coastal line and the line itself, everything is uh, artificially shaped a very long time ago. And that is really a lot of work. But it is below the radar because always of this same problem of the segmentation. They are divided as completely different historic things and they are not seen and researched in their entirety. Because many of these artificial bodies of uh, water, which I've been uh, showing you, not only have a regular shape and are recognized as historic, but also they are connected with uh, canals or sometimes even underground canals, which are very difficult to dig out. And those are usually labeled as Etruscan because in Penguinian history, by default, anything which doesn't fit in their uh, fantasy Roman history is automatically blamed onto the Etruscans. And unless all this is uh, studied together, all these elements, the, the puzzle is uh, put together with all its elements, we are not going to see the big picture. And very sadly, at the moment, the only thing in terms of study which unifies them is the total denial and neglect of all of them together. These allegedly Etruscan tunnels which go underwater, they are part of the rocket tunnels, which again are denied proper study and recognition and are left to overgrow with blackberries in the fields and forests of Italy. For example, this elderly gentleman found a massive tunnel decades ago but he could not investigate it properly because it was uh, partially flooded when he returned after decades everything was uh, overgrown and there was no more access to the tunnel and that's exactly what we find in the mainstream uh, sources as well they frankly admit openly that simply they do not study these uh, tunnels uh, also, underwater tunnels, they are there, but they do not study them. And here I'm gonna include a part of an older video because it is uh, so much relevant to the types of uh, earthworks discussed in this video. These are lake ships found in this very same area. They are dated back to the period of antiquity. Possibly, because this is some of the decoration that survived. And as far as the ships themselves, the photos is all that is left from them. They burned them. They had it all. Giant, luxurious ships. A fleet of terraformation machines. And an intricate system of underground tunnels. This tunnel, for example, we found absolutely by chance, away from any road or even path. It went on for some 50 meters before. It was too clogged with soil and stones to follow further. The tunnels we saw, as well as all other rocket ruins in Italy and probably all over the world, simply lay out there unexcavated. It is absolutely obvious that the tunnels and the rocket ruins are buried. We cannot see them properly and yet nowhere during the two expeditions we saw any hint that the penguins are interested in studying them. While on the other hand, even in this very short time gap of two years since the previous expedition, 
I could already see the shockingly fast rate by which they are being overgrown by vegetation. And I can't even imagine if we lost that much in two years, then how much could have been lost for hundreds of years. The ancient people of Italy had even underground water tunnels for regulating the water levels of entire lakes. This network connected three lakes, Nemi, Albano and another one which is now dry and had a length of a couple of kilometers. It is not that easy to make white tunnels connecting the bottoms of their lakes and everything in this system of uh, tunnels was properly calculated so the drainage could effectively take place. In the article about them I saw a short remark that there are 12 such systems in the region of Lazio alone, which is not even a big region. But I wonder how relevant this number could be when we see unexcavated tunnels, means nobody has even bothered to check what are they all about, and also the rocket ruins, the dwellings, they tend to be interconnected with uh, tunnels as well. So when they're not excavated, then how do we know that there aren't even more tunnels? Here are some of those, uh, so to say, underwater canals in uh, focus on these images. Or maybe they were simply canals when the water levels were different. I most definitely noticed that uh, the ancient uh, canals, which are now on land, tend uh, sometimes to finish with such uh, let's say, let's call them underwater canals. And that turned out to be one of the easier ways uh, to find older canals and distinguish them from the modern ones, because I assume that not all straight canals in Italy are historic. Uh, it is not that all ancient canals end in such a way, but the opposite it's true that uh, all of those who do end in such a way seem to be ancient. This place looks a little bit uh, like uh, Exactly like our modern art artificial small beaches, the cued round beaches, however it is submerged uh, to the same extent as uh, all the other elements. Maybe they had the same beaches, maybe they were making the same beaches like us. I also saw a good number of uh, ports, big and small and huge. Maybe that could be a subject of another video, because uh, they need to be explained. Most definitely, most of them are also submerged. So the two other places on Earth which have uh, very similar, if not identical, uh, 
systems, complexes of uh, earthworks, channels, and ports are uh, North America and uh, the region around Cambodia, large part of Southeast Asia, Vietnam, and that full region. More information on the Cambodian network of such artworks you can find in this video. But both of them don't really help us uh, get nearer to the answer who and when made all that in Italy. In Cambodia that includes the moats around uh, the various uh, temples in the Angkor Wat complex. They don't take even into consideration the entire uh, network of very regular, geometrically perfect channels in the regions, and still even the mainstream sources admitted that uh, somehow the math uh, about doing it all with uh, manual labor, as people should have been doing it in case their history is correct, uh, somehow doesn't add up. So, no hope for an answer from the Cambodian side, and even less from the North American, where I'm not even aware if anybody has uh, seriously tried to even tackle the problem. Here, one of the countless regions in Italy with very high density of very regular channels. If we believe the mainstream sources about the Italian uh, historic canals, uh, we'll be left a little bit confused, because they are usually quite um, abstract when they talk about them, they say they are historic and yet they leave this general impression that they were built gradually over the ages and over the centuries. Which is not really the case, because what we actually see on the ground are a complete and well-planned engineering systems of canal interconnecting lakes, draining lakes, calculations, the water is uh, moving in a very regulated way. This, these are components of a single project, and they are talking that somebody started building it and somebody else finished it after 13 centuries. And I don't see how can they be believed anyway if they obviously don't show interest in actually studying the places or preserving them in any way. As usual, I see them only making an endeavor to make the impression that everything is figured out and don't you bother to go and see how the things actually are. Now let's try to compare what we saw in Italy, North America and uh, Southeast Asia with uh, the Grand Canal of China about which we seem to have some sort of uh, chronicles. How well are they translated and how correct is the dating? That is another question, but still we seem to have something. Now, looking at the lines of the canal, there is visible difference with the precise geometric uh, forms we see in the North America and uh, Cambodia. In China we see a total correspondence between the mainstream version and the translation of the chronicles and what we see on the ground. We indeed see uh, modified and adjusting uh, riverbeds of uh, rivers which already exist and they are cleverly connected to make this uh, network called the Grand Canal of China. And that's why we see some straight lines in the segments which were uh, man-made, but we don't see really the exact precision which we saw in the other areas. We don't see that geometrical precision, which means that those belong to a different class of earthworks and channels. Well, I myself for now don't have a clear hypothesis about uh, who, when and why built the precise earthworks. There could be splitting or merging of different historic timelines involved, which will make it uh, quite difficult for uh, mentally limited creatures like ourselves to figure it out.
but it will be a good start if at least uh, in general we start uh, becoming aware how confused are we in terms of what we think we know about our history. I also noticed a good amount of uh, circles among the historic uh, earthworks near the coastal line in Italy and I do believe that they are uh, not modern because uh, very often I saw them submerged as well next to those who are still on the shore. and maybe a small submerged port here. There is really a lot of uh, this type of ruins in Italy. And now follows the full Italian version of the story of the lost and found now for those who speak Italian language. Arrivi a Blera, la Blera moderna, diciamo, il, il paese, e tu scendi sulla destra, c'è una, una specie di vallone con una, contornata da due collinette piccole e leggere, in fondo al vallone c'è un torrentello con un, un piccolo ponte ad arco. Fra il paese e il torrente eh, c'era, ho trovato una casa diroccata. Per curiosità eh, mi sono così, ho guardato dentro e ho visto che c'era un pozzo. Ho guardato giù, mi sono incuriosito e sono sceso. Arrivato sotto ho, trovato, ho visto una, una specie di, di tunnel, ma un tunnel fatto ad arco, a ogiva, capito? Ho fatto un metro, ho fatti due, avevo una lampada e, e ho proseguito, ed ho proseguito per alcune centinaia di metri. Poi ho avuto paura sono tornato indietro e sono risalito. Per tornare indietro si è voluto tornare indietro? Eh, sì, no. Tornato indietro con tutta la testa piena di, di, di tufo, di, di, ti lascio immaginare come stavo, mi sono dovuto spogliare nudo, scrullare tutto e ho capito che quello era un, un tunnel fatto dagli etruschi per portare l'acqua ai campi lo usavano come, eh, come dire, era un, faceva parte di, di, di un complesso um, per portare l'acqua in, in, in tutta la zona agricola della Blera Etrusca. È uno dei, dei pochi um, che ancora si erano rimasti intatti, ora però sono passati... Dieci anni? Dieci anni. 
40 anni perché io ci ho riportato poi mh, Mauro. Mauro ma ormai vent'anni fa in, ho trovato questa casa diroccata ma completamente sbracata per cui probabilmente ha chiuso tutto sotto a capire capito? però siccome avevo letto che usavano questo sistema gli etruschi per, per portare l'acqua da, da un punto all'altro e per bonificare le paludi eccetera e lì mi sono reso conto che, che effettivamente era vero perché in tutto quel territorio la chiamano la civiltà del tufo sì. che parte da lì e arriva fino a dove siete stati voi a, alla miata e loro il tufo lo sapevano usare e hanno fatto una serie di curicoli più o meno l'altezza grosso modo guarda eh. diciamo almeno un metro di larghezza era e e al culmine del coso 1,20 m, 1,30 m.